Today in the news, AMD might have another CPU in stores for us, a new FPS is on the way, and Sony might go Stadia. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with AMD. The Ryzen lineup for Zen 2 is already really nice. We have six standalone CPUs that are available to the public, starting with the 6 core and 12 thread 3600, all the way up to the upcoming 16 core CPU, the 3950X. If the company was about to add a new chip, I would have guessed that it would be a 6 core, 6 thread CPU, you know, fill up that bottom line. Keep in mind that I'm not counting OEM CPUs since they're not standalone, like the Ryzen Pro or the 3900 or 3500X. Anyways, in their latest product master guide, AMD slipped in a new CPU that would add it to the lineup, the 3750X. Now there isn't much information on this CPU besides its TDP, but since the list has been taken down from AMD's website quite quickly, it might mean we saw something that wasn't supposed to be there. So what's the difference between this one and the current Ryzen 7 lineup? Well, let's explore. Right now we have the 3700 x and 3800x both eight core cpus with 16 threads their base clock and boost clocks are quite similar the 3700x has a base clock of 3.6 gigahertz and a 4.4 boost while the 3800x has a base of 3.9 and a boost of 4.5 gigahertz that means there isn't a lot of room to play around here but the main difference lies in their tdp the 3700x is at 65 watts and the 3800x at 105. this new 3750X is also going to be at 105 watts. Now, here's what AMD might do. Both the current chips are at 8 cores on a single die. And in case you didn't know, each Zen 2 die has 4 cores that perform better than the other 4. Those are usually marked with a gold star, a gray star, and 2 gray circles. So for the 3750X, AMD might not bump up the clock speeds at all, but they might spread the 8 cores over 2 dies to take advantage of the best 8. That would allow this CPU to reach higher clock speeds on more cores at the same time compared to the other two CPUs. With two dies also comes the possibility of doubling the game cache that AMD likes to show off. So why this and why now? Well, Intel is on the verge of releasing their 9900KS processor and it will undoubtedly be the best 8 core gaming CPU around. Please note that I said best gaming CPU and not the best bang for your buck. So this might be a way to gain more performance out of a chip for AMD. For the pricing, it's a little tighter. The 3700X is at 329 and the 3800X at 399. This could be a chance for AMD to adjust their pricing so the new chips can sort of slot right in between the two. Keep in mind, even though the 3750X name and the TDP are official information that have been taken from AMD's website directly, but have been pulled back, the actual information as to what the CPU will actually be like has only been rumored so far. So take it with a grain of salt. Moving on, we had the Riot Please live stream a few days ago, and it was actually celebrating the uh, 10 year anniversary of League of Legends. During that live stream, Riot introduced a few new IPs. There was Legends of Runeterra, a card game, Project L, a fighting game for which we have zero information, and an animated series called Arcane. Personally, what I was most excited about is Project A. Project A looks like a perfect blend of CSGO and Overwatch. You have the high accuracy competitive shooter style of CSGO with abilities that seem to come straight from Blizzard's Overwatch. In the video, linked down below, we see two characters with pretty cool ones. They're also focusing a lot on the netcode in this game. They're saying that they want to eliminate Peeker's advantage, although that's almost impossible to a certain degree unless they go deeper into prediction algorithms. Now there's not much info on the game, but I'll keep you updated since I love hero-based tactical shooters. What about you guys? Which game are you most most excited about. Moving on to console news, it seems like PlayStation might take a page straight out of Google's book. Their new controllers, which are supposed to come with some pretty awesome feedback triggers, might also have a Google Stadia-like feature. In a patent filed by Sony but found by Techtastic, the company applied for a network-connected controller for direct-to-cloud gaming. In case you didn't know, the Stadia controller doesn't connect directly to your Chromecast or your PC. It can if you want to, but to reduce latency, the controller can 
connect via Wi-Fi directly to the Stadia servers to play your games remotely. This feature would work great with Sony's already established PlayStation Now service. Heck, it could even connect to both the PlayStation and the cloud at the same time and maybe reduce some input lag on the server side. Another interesting part of the patent is a way to interact with a streamer. The image shows a nondescript streaming page and according to the description of the image, the viewer could issue commands affecting the video game or even take over control of the streaming user's gameplay. That could make for some pretty interesting user interaction. Now, as with any patents, there's a high chance that nothing will come out of it but with all the streaming services popping up, I can see Sony making this move. All right, so I got another Q&A video coming up for this Monday. So if you guys want to ask me questions, whether it's about me, the news, or it's tech related, leave it down below with the hashtag Q&A. That's the letter Q-N-N-A. Anyways, that is pretty much it for the news today. You can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one.